If you were thinking that the automotive world has reached the pinnacle of innovation with electric cars, you'd be wrong. Prepare to be blown away even more because Sweden, the country known for its delicious meatballs and breathtaking scenery, is about to inaugurate the world's first permanent electrified road. Imagine being able to take long journeys in your electric car with complete peace of mind without ever having to worry about running out of battery. Well, this revolutionary road will make your dream come true. How does it work? What are the main benefits? Stay tuned as we'll tell you all about it in this video. A revolutionary road Like the flying cars in the sci-fi film The Fifth Element, the idea of an electrified road seems to be just as crazy. So get ready, because this revolutionary road will also be a part of our future, and Sweden will be the forerunner. However, it looks like Tesla cars won't be able to use it just yet. Oops, going a bit too fast there. But don't worry, we'll come back to it later. First of all, let's talk about this electrifying new technology from Sweden. A few years ago, a bill was introduced in the European Union. This requires all new cars sold from 2035 onwards to be carbon dioxide free or CO2 free. As a result, European countries rushed to put in place the infrastructure needed for this fossil fuel free mobility. One country in particular is ahead of the game. This is Sweden, which is making great efforts to adopt renewable energies. According to Euronews Next, the country is in the process of transforming a freeway into a permanent electrified road. This is the E20 European road, which connects the logistics platforms between Halsberg and Orebro, located in the middle of the country's three major cities, Stockholm, Göteborg and Malmö. It will be the first of its kind in the world. We believe that electrification is the way forward for decarbonizing the transport sector and we're working with a number of solutions, said Jan Pettersson. Director of Strategic Development at Traffic Verket, the Swedish National Transport Administration. But did you know that Sweden had already set up several pilot projects of this type a few years ago? That's right, the country created the world's very first temporary electric road. In 2018, Traffic Verket inaugurated the world's first charging rail for electric vehicles on public roads as part of a pilot project between Stockholm's Arlanda Airport and the logistics zone in Rosersburg. It has also built a wireless electric road for trucks and buses on the island town of Visby in 2020. Other countries are also seriously studying this subject. In the USA, for example, a similar project is underway in Michigan. Electrion, an Israeli company, is the initiator. What we're doing is taking vehicle charging to a new level. So instead of having electric vehicles that stand still and recharge like we do with our cars, you can recharge a vehicle more frequently and automatically on the infrastructure, said Stefan Tonga, Electrion's vice president of business development. The Michigan Department of Transportation, with which Electrion collaborates, is eager to launch the program. It's all very exciting, but you're probably wondering, when are we going to get an explanation of how the electric road works? Don't worry about a thing, we'll take care of it right away. So, how does it work? Well, according to the definition, an electric road system allows electric vehicles to recharge while driving. At present, ERS are based on three types of systems, the catenary system, the ground conductive system and the inductive system. The catenary system uses overhead cables suspended above the road to supply vehicles with electricity. Only vehicles fitted with a contact device called a pantograph can connect to these cables to receive electricity while driving. This is the kind of system that powers streetcars and electric trains. It's particularly well suited to heavy vehicles such as buses. Conduction charging, on the other hand, works equally well for trucks and cars. It essentially relies on the use of a rail integrated into the road surface. Equipped vehicles connect to the rail via a contact device to receive electricity as they travel. The system is similar to catenary systems, but instead of using overhead cables, the energy is transmitted through the ground. And finally, the induction charging system uses special equipment buried under the road to send electricity to a coil in the electric vehicle. When a vehicle passes over the device integrated into the road, electricity is transmitted by induction, enabling the vehicle's battery to be recharged while driving. However, as far as the E20 permanent electric road project in Sweden is concerned, the charging method has not yet been decided. 
The project is currently in the procurement stage and it should be built by 2025. According to information obtained by Euronews Next, this world's first electric highway is set to be absolutely revolutionary, as it could lead to a further 3,000 kilometers of electric roads in Sweden by 2035. But among the many benefits that ERS should bring, here's the most important. The benefits of ERS. Thanks to dynamic recharging, electric vehicles, particularly heavy goods vehicles and electric buses, will no longer face challenges such as battery size, range and recharging time. If you only have a static full battery charging solution for heavy vehicles, you'll get vehicles with a huge amount of batteries that they'll have to carry around, Jan Patterson told Euronews Next. This technology will enable trucks to recharge faster and more efficiently. This will enable them to cover longer distances and use smaller batteries. In the long term, this will lower vehicle prices and save raw materials. Of course, this system will also benefit passenger cars. So, what benefits can ERS bring to these types of vehicles? Chalmers University of Technology recently carried out a study on 412 passenger cars that are used to driving on stretches of Swedish and European national roads. According to its findings, the combination of home charging and dynamic charging can reduce the battery size of electric cars by 70%, and electrifying just 25% of all roads would be enough to make the system work. However, vehicles living in city centers will benefit more than those in rural areas. The battery life required with the ERS differs depending on whether you're living in a city or the countryside, which means that drivers who live near the city center will have smaller batteries because they're closer to the ERS and they will get more out of it. Dr. Wasim Shoman, a researcher in the Department of Space, Earth and Environment at Chalmers University of Technology, told Euronews Next. But he believes that improvements will surely be made over time so that everyone can enjoy the same benefits from electric roads. That's all well and good, but will today's electric cars like the Tesla ever be able to drive on this type of a road? Well, it may be some time before that happens. Vehicles will have to undergo a number of modifications before they can run on the ERS. They need to incorporate either a conduction or induction charging system. But in any case, another car brand could well be on the case right now. It's Hyundai. The automaker is said to be working on an innovative, fast and efficient wireless recharging system for its electric models. This system relies on electromagnetism as a means of energy transfer. The vehicles will be able to recharge thanks to a buffer that supplies electricity via a magnetic field. To be able to charge, the electric vehicle will have to be aligned exactly with the base, which is fixed to the ground. This concept is similar to wireless charging for smartphones. For wireless charging to work, the device must be positioned precisely. As part of this project, Genesis, Hyundai's luxury vehicle division, is currently testing two of its electric vehicles, the GV60 and GV70. The tests, which will last until June 2023, are being carried out in the premium brand's home market of Korea. Through this project, Genesis aims to set up 20 charging stations adapted to its technology capable of delivering 11 kilowatts of power. One of the key things that we want to focus on is speed. We currently cap it at 11 kilowatts, which we feel is too slow, so we want to wait until it gets faster for mass adoption," said Mark Choi, product manager at Genesis. Thanks to this technology, Hyundai may well be one of the first manufacturers to offer ERS-compatible vehicles. In any case, time will tell. What do you think of this revolutionary new technology? When do you think the general public will be able to use this kind of a system? Do you think manufacturers will be able to adapt their electric vehicles to ERS very quickly? Tell me about it in the comments, and if you like this video, you'll love the next one.